Let me introduce you to my dream car, a 2008 base model C6 Corvette. Some would say, you're crazy. It's just another Corvette. And yes, you're right. But you see, I bought this car when I was living in a single wide trailer. This car almost cost me my marriage. Priorities, you see. As it is with anything, after you drive it for a while, it becomes slow. So as the Tim the Toolman Taylor would say, more power, more power. So the quest started for more power. And whether you have built anything, whether it's a lawnmower, a motorcycle, or a hopped up hot rod, just as soon as you make more power, with that more power, it becomes more problems. More problems, more money. But I can't say it's a bad thing, because these LS3s are pretty much bulletproof. So onward I push for the quest for more power. Oh, <laughs> more power, more power. He's coming out. And in today's video, we're going to be putting a clutch master cylinder in my 2008 Corvette. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. What is up YouTube family? What is happening? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Bad LSX Garage, where today we're gonna to be talking about and replacing the clutch master cylinder on my 2008 Corvette. Now, in 2019, we decided to go to LS Fest. LS Fest in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Now, if any of you have been to Bowling Green, Kentucky at LS Fest, it backs up all the way from the interstate to the park. So we get literally two cars away from turning into the park when hit my clutch and there is no clutch. So we get quickly get out and everybody swarms us after I say, hey guys, I have no clutch. They push us over into the corner. You may have seen my car actually sitting over in the parking lot in 2019. Many of you ask, what's wrong? Is it for sale? Can we help you? And I appreciate each and every one of you that asked any of those questions, but the answer was always no. Now, I know a lot of you are probably questioning right now, well, we've seen you drive this car since 2019. You've not even had a YouTube channel that long, and you're right. But what had happened was, and I didn't know at the time, a $500 tow bill later, two and a half hours later, plus missing LS Fest, what this little piece right here had done, and this is the piece that actually goes to your clutch pedal. When it goes through the firewall, it hooks through. Well, this little plastic piece right here had broke off and I didn't know that. So therefore I lost all of my clutch. Once I got home and realized what was going on, I also realized that I could just use some zip ties, wrap these around the clutch master cylinder, around the clutch pedal itself, and just save myself some money and some time. And for the most part, that worked until it didn't. In 2015, there was actually a recall or a bulletin on the GM website that would replace the clutch master cylinder on your C6 Corvette from 2005 to 2013. And I believe it covered 10 years and 120,000 miles, which I looked on the GM website to see if my car had been finished, had been worked on, and it showed up as no, but I also didn't get any card in the mail or anything else. But if you're anything like I am and you're just anal about things, you probably just want to do it yourself anyway. It's nothing personal, GM. I'd just rather do it myself. 
I'm not ASE certified or anything like that. I'm just a regular old guy, shade tree mechanic, loves to tinker with his own stuff and have a good time. From my understanding, from what all I have read, there's a pulsation process in these that causes these to go bad. Apparently a check ball in here that when you release your pedal, the check ball falls down. When you press the pedal in and you press this in, that check ball raises up. So therefore, there's something to do with that check ball not lining up. They get corroded, they fall apart, and then you've got half check ball, half knot, which in turn leads your pedal to going to the floor and not releasing because you don't have the fluid pressure that you need. Now, I'm not saying this is my problem, and I'm not saying it isn't my problem. What I am saying is there is a recall out there for this. I don't know if mine has been done or not. Plus, with the fact that the little end is broken off, I'm not getting the full extent of that range. So there's a pretty good chance that my check valve is halfway or non-existent. This is not an easy job by any means from what I have seen or read. I don't know. We are getting ready to find out. But first, take off your cap to your reservoir, and I'm going to take just a regular syringe type deal, and I'm going to suck some of this... Uh, fluid out of this reservoir. Coming down to the wheel well area, we need to take this panel off. And in order to do that, looks like we have six push pins and three bolts underneath. One seven millimeter and two 10 millimeter. Once the panel is removed, you can actually see that it's going to be a very, very tight quarters. We may end up having to take the washer fluid reservoir out. I don't know yet. But the next step, let's go inside the car. Get underneath your dash. There will be this little backing plate right here that goes underneath the dash. There will be two 10 millimeter Torx bolts and three, one, two, three, little push pins that connects that to the underside of your dash. You want to remove that. When you pull it out, pull your light out of this as well and put this piece off to the side somewhere. But see how I've got zip ties going around that right there? There's supposed to be a little C-clip that goes across that. And what you will do is pull that C-clip off and then just pull that rod off of the clutch pedal. Well, it's out of the car. I didn't get any camera footage of it because listen, it's all feel. You're gonna have to feel, that's the best way to do it. You close your eyes, stick your hands under there and, and just go for it. Feel which way your hoses are, feel where everything's at and it'll go smoothly. Now, this does thread out of the firewall and let me see if I can do this for you. It's gonna be sitting in your firewall like so. So this top hose right here, keep in mind where it's at. When you turn it out, you're gonna get your hand up in there as close as you can, and what you're gonna do is turn it towards the right. So you're gonna turn it like so. When it cocks to the side, you're probably looking at one, one o'clock, two o'clock, somewhere in there, pull it out at that point. It'll pull right out but make sure that you note where you're at when you stick your hands in here, because if not, you'll be trying to fight and pull just fingers across and just turn it and you're good to go and pull out. Now for the clip situation, there will be a clip down here that goes in so it connects your other lines. I marked the top of this blue so I will know where the, for sure where the top is at. This clip will just take your screwdriver and just pop it up 
get in there with your hand and just pull it the rest of the way out. Make sure you don't lose this because you will have to plug your new master cylinder into this. And this clip will go back. They don't give you a clip, so make sure you don't lose it. This new master cylinder that I got from Tech Performance is already bench bled. So I shouldn't have to do anything but plug all this in and ready to go. So it's reverse procedure. I am going to try to do this from the top again and just run it right directly through the way I pulled the old one out. And I believe that's honestly the, the best way. I don't know. We'll see. The camera's about to die, but I'm gonna give you the unprofessional tip for the day. That clip that goes from the clutch master cylinder to the clutch slave cylinder, you have to pull a clip out and it's a quick disconnect, like it is right here, for instance. This is the clutch master cylinder, and there will be a line coming from the slave cylinder, and these will clip together right here with a, you pull apart and there's that little clip that I showed you. Getting them back together is a total pain. So what I done was I took a pair of channel locks, vice grips, and I just clamped it, not really tight, but just clamped it on the slave cylinder side. And I'll zoom in right here. And then I rested the channel locks or the vice grips up against the um, steering arm. From that point, let's go back down here again. You take your clip that little C clip, stick it on there, but don't snap it into place. Just stick it on there where it'll hold. Then you could take these two fingers and grab right here and push, like squeeze together. And when you squeeze, you'll feel that lock into place. When it locks into place, take the palm of your hand and just push that little clip right down and it's that easy. It's hard to believe that something so small has been the bane of my existence for many years. This has drove me insane. And I've been not really scared to do it, but just dreading to do it. From all the horror stories that I've read online and watched online, everybody says that they had the hardest problem out of this right here, and that's putting the clutch master cylinder into the slave cylinder and putting that little clip in it. That wasn't that big of an issue for me. Honestly, I showed you the unprofessional tip for that. That went pretty smooth. The part that I had problem with was trying to get this dude back in to the firewall and get it clocked back in to 12 o'clock to where it needed to be. I couldn't get my hands contorted and twisted enough. Right, left-handed, standing on my head, upside down, scream. It didn't, it didn't matter. Nothing I'd done worked. Finally, I got in there enough and got back behind this enough. I mean, your hands are going to be tore up, especially if you've got fat hands like I do. You're going to have to get in there and push and scream and yell and then clock it at 12 o'clock and you'll be good to go. It's really not that hard. It's just a little aggravating. It's not like you can get at your peepers in there and look at anything. You're all feel here. That's it. So I hope you're good with your hands. Now, two and a half, three hour, three and a half hour job here because, mostly because I was recording. If I hadn't been recording, I could have probably got this done a little bit quicker. Now, I did get the new clutch master cylinder from Tick Performance. It came pre-bled, bench, bench bled, so I didn't have to bleed anything. I got in my car a while ago, hit the clutch. I've never had clutch that good. Apparently, this thing has been going out for quite some time, apparently as long as I've had the car the whole seven years. So, I'm good to go. I just don't have time right now to get out and try to drive it and check things out, but there will be a video of that coming soon, I'm sure, unless it starts snowing here in the next little bit, which is possible. Another thing that I highly recommend is getting some of this heat covering, this little heat shield stuff. I did put that all around the clutch master cylinder when I and put it back down in here and I also put it around as far down as I could around into the slave cylinder, the line going down into the slave cylinder. You guys know it gets super hot underneath these hoods, especially if you got headers and motor work done. So anything that you can do to keep down the heat, I mean, you need to do. So hopefully this will save me from having to do the Ranger method, every other red light and I'm okay with that. 
Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you. If you've liked this video, go down there and give me a big thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe. I'd love to have each and every one of you. Every Friday, I put out a long form video and every day I put out a short. My shorts are a little bit controversial. People will get mad. People have got mad. People are mad. People have unsubscribed. People have subscribed. I don't sugarcoat much of anything. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a family friendly channel, but I do stand for my convictions and I stand for what I believe in. I don't care how many people hate me, but I am gonna stand for what's right. I stand on the side of what's right. That's who I am and that's what I am. So if you're into that kind of stuff, go down there and look at my, my shorts and check some of those out. If you haven't checked out my long form videos, my long form videos range from cars, trucks, motorcycles, vacations, reviews, unboxings, how to's, it's everything guys, everything across the board. I don't know, apparently I'm doing something right. I've got a pretty decent following and that's what I'm trying to build is a decent following. People like-minded like myself and I know you guys and gals are out there. I know there's just not me and that's what I'm trying to build. Anyways guys, that's all I've got for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I tell you all the time in these long form videos, all these videos start differently but they end the same. You ready? Do it with me. Peace. I'm out.